Hello everyone, welcome to another Monday movie. I'm Mr. Blue Summers. So this week I'm going to be introducing you to a utility that I've written uh, as part of the Dominance War coming up. It's called Wire Bundle and what it does is it allows you to create wires programmatically that span between two points. Now what's interesting about this is that it's based on a script originally by Neil Blevins and he wrote it back in 2000 for 3D Studio Max 4 I believe. Now what I've gone ahead and done is added in a few things that you know sort of modernize this uh, originally great idea. The first of which is that I packaged it up as a macro script so you can bind it to a hotkey or add it up here to your menu bar. Another thing I've done is instead of having the wires pass through single objects and you could only have six of them, I've, I'm allowing you to pass it through any number of objects or a spline. So let's get started. I'm going to show you how to bind this to a hotkey like I have. I've run the script already and I go up here to customize, customize user interface and under the keyboard tab main UI under the categories pull down I'm gonna select blue summers and that's gonna bring up my wire bundle all you have to do is hit shift B e, assign or whatever hotkey you'd like and you're all set to go so let's take a look at how to use the script I'm gonna hit shift B and it's gonna bring up the wire bundle beta now I'm not going to go into too much detail on some of these higher up uh, spline parameters because you should already know them. Sides, for example, controls how many sides are on the splines that are going to be created. Quantity, clearly, shows you how many splines are going to be made when you click on this button down here, Create Bundle. The number of steps, optimize, adaptive, you're very used to these already. Thickness is controlled by this spinner, and you can control the variance around this value with this percentage right here. So for example, if I select 2 and 50%, that means the wires are going to be between 1 and 3 in thickness. Next up is the visibility group. This controls how well you can see the different wires that are going to be created. So right now, all of the wires are going to be enabled in the renderer, 100%. You can, for example, turn this down to 50% while you're still working if you're doing test renders, and that can save you some time especially if they're adaptive and there's a lot of them. You can also enable them in the viewport by percentage. So I only want half of them, the half of the resultant splines to be visible in the viewport to keep things snappy. Now let's move on to the fun part. Bundle pathing is this group down here and it's the most important group in this rollout. First things first, you can control whether it's based on a spline like this or based on a series of objects like these out here that I've attached to this sphere. I'm going to start with the spline. All you have to do to have bundled of wires following a spline is to pick the spline right here, spline ready, and then click create bundle. Now there's a bit of a problem here. The way that I've created this feature is that each of these splines needs to pass through every point in the parent spline, but there aren't any points out here. So these bundles don't adhere very well to this spline. Let me show you how to fix it. Click Delete Last, then select the parent spline, and under the Sub Object Selection where it says Segment, click on that, hit Control A to select all of the segments, and then scroll down, down right here. Divide. And click Divide. So the shape of the spline is roughly identical, but now there's more points that the wire bundle has to adhere to all the way up. So if I click Create Bundle again, you'll see that the wire bundle adheres perfectly. And if you need to change any parameters, you can always delete last, change it up a little bit, and then recreate the bundle. The best part is, you can make these all invisible in the viewport, and you can leave the original spline as a proxy. But when you render, those splines will be there for you. Neat trick, huh? So let's delete last, and I'd like to show you how to use objects that you can have the splines pass through. Now these six objects here, they follow the curvature of this sphere, as you can see. Now there are two ways that you can input these. 
The first is by adding them one at a time. Add box, add box, kind of tedious. Or you can select them and then click this button right here, selection. And it will add them in order of their name. So make sure that you keep your naming convention straight or you won't be very pleased with this feature. You can move them around if needed. I don't need to, these are all named in order. And one more thing that I brought over from Neil's original script was having the splines pass through the bounding box of the object or the object's vertices at random. You can experiment with this vertices feature by creating shapes, converting them to a single polygon, and then putting them as the path objects. I'm going to leave it on bounding box for now. Now all I have to do is cre click create bundle. And there you have it. This bundle of wires passes through these boxes. Let me show you in the viewport. There we go. Pretty cool, huh? And you can make the wires go anywhere you want. And that's how you use this script. Again, I'll be sure to include a link to the .zip file for you um, when I post this on my blog. I hope you enjoy it. Don't forget to tune in next week for another Monday movie. Until then, happy modeling, and good luck in the dominance war.